Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to give you my top 5 tips of tools that you need for your DIY power wall. And this is especially for getting your batteries out of the laptop packs and processing them. Stay tuned for the top 5 today. On spot number 5 you need a soldering iron and I recommend something like this. A one with a thicker tip and a big mass. This one is around 150 watt and it solders the cell quick and easy if you want to. You can check my other videos on how to solder and desolder and you will see how easy this is working. If your soldering iron or soldering gun does not take it or does it like mine do, you should most likely consider changing and getting you another one. Links can be found down below for a velar type that is really good for this purpose. Spot number 4. I do recommend to have some kind of voltmeter or avometer and in case I'm going to recommend this clamp meter here. This clamp meter has a combination of voltmeter, resistance and even in-rush current. With this one you can easily measure your rush current for your applications and other stuff. I know there are cheaper ones out there that you can buy for just measuring voltage and down below you will have links to both this unit here that I highly recommend a link to a video where I looked into this one and also linked on where you can buy it. This is place number 4. Place number 3 is of course the trusted little snippy. This tool here this is a flush cut plier do take care of the, all the debris and stuff that you have on the cell. This one is really versatile and you can remove everything you need. If you need to remove the tops you can easily get access to it and clean it off and get rid of it. You can also remove everything from the cell when you have them from the pack by just putting them in and turning them around and it will get loose. This is one of the best snippers that I ever have had and it's perfect for this type. You should not cut thick wires with it but for this purpose and cutting thin wires this is a really really good thing. It doesn't cost much either so if you want to have a snipper like this one check out the links down below for a link to that. You can also see me use this one in the processing video for 18650 cells. If you haven't seen that, links down below as well. On place number two, if you are processing cells like I do in a quick way and you don't want to hurt yourself, I do recommend proper gloves. I do like these very, very thick gloves because they can, I can work really fast without tearing my fingers apart. You can of course use thinner gloves as well, but do not think that those protect you from every sharp corner. This one does. It also is a good glove when you are tearing the packs apart because you can do a lot of things with it. If you have the glove and you tear it apart, you will not hurt yourself when you have sharp cor corners like on this pattern here. And you will be able to actually grab it on and open it up very very simply. On this hand I don't have any gloves currently and I can feel the sharp corners. On this one I don't. It is clumsy, but I do highly recommend it. So place number two proper gloves. I have some links down below, I don't know how they are because I buy my gloves locally. But gloves is a good thing and it doesn't cost much to have. And of course, last but not least, you need a battery tester. You can get many different battery testers and I have used a lot of them. Personally I like the Opus BTC3100 because it is simple, it works and it does the job very well. It's not accurate in that sense but it do work. It can test four cells at a time at up to one amp current. And one amp current is good enough for me. If you want really really good results, you should consider buying an iCharger Duo or something else that is much more versatile in that sense. But it costs a lot more as well. Uh, you have several others like the Litokala and you have smaller CBL units. They work as, as well, but I do like the Opus. If you want to buy any of those testers, check them out below. And if you want to actually build a charging and test station like I did, check out the videos down below and you'll see what you need for that. So guys, this was my top 5 list of tools and utilities that you need or you should have that I recommend for testing and processing 18650 cells. There is different ways of doing it, this is one way to do it and I like those tools here. So if you need any of those tools, check out the links down below. Don't forget to press the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. So guys, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.